Good evening guys and welcome to another episode of Football Focus. It's a special one today. This is episode 18, right? Yep. 18. And we're here in the Sharjah FC boot room. And the reason why we're here today is because we're shooting a special um, question and answer with um, the CEO of the Pro League. And we thought we'd take this opportunity to do this introduction here. Myself and Ian, we've left Tony, he doesn't know we're here. We're doing this, we're doing it without Tony this one. But he'll be, <laughs> he'll be in the rest of the show. And Tell us a bit about the, um, the final that's coming up. Well, we've got the final here in Sharjah, so it's Al Nasser versus Shabbat. And if you watch our interview, we'll go into all the details about that. So we know that Al Nasser have won it twice, Shabbat have um, won it four times. Yeah. Um, happens on Friday, so it's going to be a superb game. It's going to be a tight game, um, but you've got to watch the interview to find out about that. It's going to be brilliant. All right, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, and if you want to comment as well, make sure you put a comment in there. And before Tony comes in and finds out we've done the introduction without him, Enjoy the rest of the show. Masalama, enjoy. Right, so here we are guys, we're in the Sharjah FC, home of the champions, we're in the boot room. We managed to sneak in here uh, just to do this little segment. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, Cup Final 2021, uh, which is being called, it's been titled, the Year of the 50th Cup Final. And that's a slogan. And this is in line with the directives of His Highness, Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, who declared that 2021 as the year of the 50th in celebration of the UAE's Golden Jubilee. And that's why it's called the year of the 50th. Uh, the, year, the year of the 50th Cup this year will be translated into actions when title holders Al Nasser will be facing contender Shabab Al Ahli. The highlight the joyful atmosphere coinciding with the Golden Jubilee celebrations, emphasizing the values of the past and aspiring the future with enthusiasm. To continue the UAE's development journey in all fields, including sports, especially in football. The match, this match is going to be an interesting one. It's going to be an impeccable and passionate match between two giants of the UAE Pro League football teams. And the match seeks to highlight their love for the nation. And uh, this is going to be definitely one to be watching out for. Shabab Al Ali under Mehdi Reda and Al Nasser under Ramon Diaz. This isn't the first time for both teams are going to be meeting here at the final. Um, and like I said earlier, Al Nasser have won it twice and the reigning champions and Shabab Al Ali have won it four times. This could be the fifth or Al Nasser will retain it and be the champion for the third time. We're expecting some amazing football from both teams uh, with the dangerous three at the front. We've got Igor Jesus, we've got Mohamed Jumai, who's very one to watch out for, and Eduardo going up against Al Nasser, Sebastian Talibu, uh, Kaik and Rashid Mohamed Omar. Both teams hungry to secure the victory of the 50th Cup Final. Make sure you watch this one. Okay, let's analyse our first game in. Top of the table, Al Jazeera. They need to win, they're at home against Al Wasser. Yeah. We know what kind of team Al Wasser is in. Yeah, they're going to turn up today. Exactly, and they've got some really good players. We know how good Fabio Lima is. I think he's second top goal scorer in the league. And of course, so it's a battle between them two for the Golden Boat yeah, as well. Absolutely, and a, a lot riding on this game. It is, yeah. and a lot. A lot they need to win. They need to. You're absolutely right. And I was just here with, with Banyas constantly grinding out results. We said the last couple of weeks Banyas haven't been playing very well. They've been getting the points. Where well, Al have dropped a couple of points um, along the way. So this is a huge game. That on oh, that uh, local derby that lost against Al Wahd. Yeah, that was a big shot, a big surprise. Exactly. And and we know how well drilled Al Jazeera are. And and it, my, my, Marcel Kaiser's got the team playing some really really good football. But they just haven't had the results the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and it lived up to the bill in the end. It did. It was a really cracking game. Straight from the off. What happened with the first goal? Kalfan Mubarak free kick. Brilliant. He's got a really wonderful left foot. Absolutely brilliant. We're just as we plays it through, just whips it in, plays it right into the edge of that six yard box. And as we spoke about last week, players have got to dominate, they've got to communicate and talk to each other. And as we stop the play here, the keeper's coming out, he's focused on the ball. That's his ball, Ian. It's got to be mentioned now. 
we mentioned last week, didn't we, that sort of second six yard yeah. box. That's the area they like to put the ball in because yeah. yeah. people don't know whether the keeper's coming or not. So what happened here? Was it lack of communication? Here? Absolutely. You know, they're both, in fairness, both focusing on the ball, which is great, but the keeper's got to dominate that six yard box. He's got to screen for it. And if he does, he comes out and takes that quite comfortably. If he's not happy to catch it, not a problem. He can punch it out and they can play for net. He does nothing. And unfortunately, now it's a new signing there. Does his best, gets his head to the ball, unfortunately, deflects it towards the goal. Um, and as we just pause it here, again, Al Jazeera set up, seems to be set up reasonably well, quite compact, but then it's just a lack, lack of concentration here from the full back, the right back. Yeah. yeah. All he's going to do is get something on it. Yeah. Or follow the ball. And he doesn't, he misses it. He's got space. And then that movement from Lima, great ball in, little flick. Keeper makes a good save, good positioning, but of course, it comes straight back to him. And he, you know, if you give him a second chance, he's not going to. Come at the moment, come at the man. Exactly. Fabio Lima scored for the. For UAE national team mm. over, the, um, over the week they had off. But one thing I was pretty impressed with, especially, was his, his movement and his first touch. His first touch is exceptional. And if you get your first touch right, it makes everything up so much easier for you. Um, and it was, a, you know, an excellent, excellent finish. Really? Keeper, I say, keeper was unlucky, but here. So as we pause it here, you think not too bad. Um, that was all set up reasonably mm. well. But just how easy is that ball gets played to central midfield here? Look how easy it is to turn and you can face face the play. Too much space, and it just turns there and just man is suddenly the playmaker, Kalfan Mubadi. Yeah. Don't let the ball go to him in space. From here, he was facing this way, he received the ball, Al Wassel let him turn, suddenly he's facing the play and knows what's going on. Someone needs to get in tight to him, and again just watch this movement up front. Yeah. Great little ball in, get a good first touch, brilliant little reverse pass, and then the main man does the rest again. Again. Come off the hour, come off the man. And there was a hint of potentially it was going to be offside. They checked it on VAR, which we'll see now. Um, and it wasn't. His, his time is run beautifully. Yes. And these two, I've watched these two play regularly, Kalfan mm. Mubadik, and I know you have. Yeah. They have this symbiotic relationship, don't they, you could say? Yeah, well, they both know. You know, Where he's going when to go. Mubarak gets it, he knows exactly where he's going to go. And um, Mubarak knows where and he's going to play in the ball. They both come through the youth ranks, so yeah. they know each other. And, it's, and it's nice to see that. Yeah, you know, it is. The, Communication between them is very, very little. It's just all an instinct. They know exactly where each other's going to be. Well spotted. And it's very difficult for players. But again, it was allowing that space in the midfield. Yeah. And then we know, you've always said their strength is their midfield. But again, again, prime example, expecting the ball centre of midfield into here, players allowed to come, he receives it, and it turns, and he's facing the play again. People, they've got to get tighter to him. Do not let him turn. They're making play the ball back where he's just going to he's turning, he's got time and space to do something. Exactly. And as we play it on here, great little chip pass, great touch, great finish. Finish. Yeah, unfortunately though, just snuck offside. Was it? Yeah. No. So as we can see here, all gets clipped in. We're off the okay. game. But again, reasonable setup from the uh, Alwasp defence, quite compact, making it difficult, a number of players in behind the ball. Decent strike, the keeper's always got that there for me, uh, no problem at all. But look at this for a delivery. Look at this for a pass and the first touch. Yes, it now. Again, yeah. superb. He's in cracking form in Tilly, man. At the yeah. moment, he is. A, I would say he's. A, you know, you could be hyper, 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 hyper critical. critical. It's, it's a it's a great ball in, but this defender gets just caught underneath it. He's always backpedalling. He's always struggling. But then, like I said earlier on in the clip, his first touch makes a difference. And look at how he brings this down and where he presents the ball. Technically, it's perfect, isn't it? Bang! Exactly where he wanted it. Right onto his left foot, didn't even have to break stride, and then just slides it past the goalkeeper. That's spotted, and yeah, that's yeah. that's the difference. And then what about this? Well, I've seen him score. This guy is just a freak specialist. He's, yeah. he's got to be the best in the league at this. Oh, absolutely. Well, how far is he? In, would you say? Well, it's what twenty-five yards at least, if not a little bit. And, and we're talking a top-class goalkeeper. We're not yeah. talking. They've got a, a wall. Is but the, the power and the whip he gets onto it is exceptional. I would like to see the keeper do a little bit better. You know, he's got. I think he gets both hands to it, but it's the power that just takes it through. I mean, that through. is phenomenal. It reminds me of David Beckham. Yeah, in his heyday, Kasanovic scored about something like seven or eight goals. Yeah. This As season. you can see, look at the whip on that. Keeper's got to cross well, and for me, if he's getting two hands to it, he's got to do a bit better. Yeah, he should. Um, but at this stage, you know, it's three-two Al Wassel, uh, three-two Al Jazeera. It's a good game. It's a good finish. Four minutes. Four minutes that in. And Lehman again, get his touch, the way he gets it back onto his feet, and then so unlucky. You know, that would have made it 3 0 with five minutes to go. And there's still Al Jazeera hanging on. Oh, keeper's done well there. That you know, literally could have gone anywhere. Yeah, it could have done. 
I mean, it was a, gr- a big test for Al Jazeera, but they, they did the business, maybe a little bit lucky at the end, the end mm. but a big test. Al Wassel did really, you've got to give Al Wassel credit, they yeah. came out and gave him the game, and I've got to say they, they came through it. Yes. But when you see someone performance like that from Al Wassel, you wonder why they're in the position they are. You know, they should be for This is third, top of the best team in the league, and yeah. they could have won, they could have got a draw. Yeah. Was, uh, but speaking of the press, press conference afterwards, Marcel Kaiser you know, he's extremely happy with, with the points and then, you know, at this stage with three games it doesn't matter how you get there you've just got to get it <laughs> and they hung on and, and did it so yeah good result oh, yeah, back at top of the table yeah. Yeah, Al Jazeera well done Al Jazeera and lucky Al Wassel ok let's move on to our next game Shabab Al Atli versus uh, Eisman or was it Fajira no Fajira you are in for a cracking game this game has everything let's have a look at it Okay, and uh, before we look at the highlights, I mean, this was a game that had absolutely everything in it. I mean, Fajira went 2 0 up, but Shabab Al Athli, it came down to three protagonists in this game. The goalkeeper for Fajira mm-hmm. pulls out a world class save, saves a penalty, and do two plays for Shabab, Shabab Al Athli. Um, Mar Sharapov, mm-hmm. is it, in the Uzbekistani, and um, the Emirati Juma. Mm-hmm. We'll see in the game. These two players were unplayable. And Shabab al Athli could have had 10 goals, but it came down to the keeper. They didn't have the shooting boots on. You didn't, I mean, you, I've just said it already once. You're on in for a cracking game. And uh, Shabab al Athli deserved the win. Fajira, they got two goals. They only had really two chances and got two goals. Mm. It, you know, it was really a game of two hours. But let's have a look at it. I'm talking too much. Let's have a look at it here. Let's look at our first chance that came in. Fajira. You know, these, they brought in this Brazilian, Douglas Coutinho. It took him a little bit to get into the game here, but look at his first goal. A lovely flick on header, strikes first blood. That's the first chance they had, and they scored a goal mm-hmm. for you. A great corner. You can see the manager is, uh, is chuffed to bits. That's where they actually like to show the chuffed to bits. Lovely flick on header. Yeah. I mean, it's a, a classic set, set piece. Well, yeah. his desire to win that ball he yeah. wanted that ball you see so many times ball gets knocked in the box and people just sort of half-hearted job he wanted to get on and that he ball. knew where he wanted to yeah. be Ben Labi knew where to put the ball yeah. and what about I like about Douglas Coutinho the, the Brazilian they brought in January and he's, he's got better because he, mm. he scored on his debut but then he drifted in and out of games I'm finding he's getting more and more he set up the other goal the other week yeah. we saw he's scoring goals he's, he's assisting as well he really is been a great signing for him. Yeah. And he got a goal. Yeah. And then Shabab Al Athli, number seven, watch this guy. Marsharapov had a cracking game on Juma. This is the other game. Got pace, power. I mean, how he missed that, I, I, I don't know. And then yeah. he missed again. Yeah. And he just kept missing. I thought, this guy's not going to score today. And then Juma again, we'll have another look. I'm not sure if this is the goal, Ian. But is it? Sharapov again, my Sharapov. Yeah. So he hits the ball, hits the post, misses the rebound, and then hits the, yeah. the crossbar. I'm thinking, it's not their day today. Fijira could do it. It was almost a carbon copy, wasn't it? You know, the, the way that he's just run down, run down the right hand side, no one's got anywhere near him. He's, just, he's cut his side, cut the ball back. Powers. And, you know, they should be, it should be 2 1. Yeah, they really, they really should. I mean, how he missed, I don't know, mm. to get two bites of the cherry as well. But then the goal comes again. Sharapov. Goalkeeper makes a great save. Let's have a look at now. This is the second goal. Sorry, Muftau. Mm. Again, Douglas, Douglas Coutinho, the Brazilian. Mm. Strong, big player. There was a shout for handball. It wasn't. Got out, I think it was two or three players around. Look at three players. Managed to win the ball. Had the composure to pass it to the defender, Muftau. Puts it away. But again, just that, again, what we mentioned before, his strength, desire, he wants the ball more. The Shabab guys were obviously he's in the box, they're frightened to get near him in case he goes down, but, yeah. but he wanted that and he knew what he was going to do with it and they just, just backed off a little bit. So that's the only <laughs> the two chances they had yeah. and they put him away. And I'm looking at this thinking I was commentating another game. For Jira 2 0, I mean, I actually said in my commentary if Shabab Al Athli lose and for Jira win, I'll eat my hat. Yeah. And I was getting nervous at 2 0. I really was getting, I think it. What did I say? Yeah. But then this Jumar again, Masha, uh, Masharapov, the Uzbekistani, 
Yeah. Again, watch this Emirati play. He's a one for the future. He mm. really is number 13. Yeah. So but if right. you notice, it's all down this right hand side. So yeah. everything is down this right hand side. They picked it up, and you notice they brought in more players mm. here. I noticed because of what it, the damage he's doing. But again, he's still. Yeah. Let's have a look at play through. And he's another great ball in. Marshall, oh, there he is. Again, he, he, they were unplayable, these two. Lovely ball in. Goalkeeper saves it. Yeah. Pulls out a great save there. You're the goalkeeper. Yeah, he's, he was so unlucky, wasn't he? Instinctive. Point blank, he's done brilliantly just to get on the end How of the lucky is it to pull out a and great he save? He could have gone absolutely anywhere. It goes to Igor Jesus. He's not going to miss. But again, I just don't think the Fajero defence are quick enough to react. To that, that's that. a huge ball right across the pitch. And they're strolling into position. They need to be sprinting into position, making sure these people Backing up his goalkeeper. Yeah. That ball's got to clear it. Yeah. That brought them back into the game. Mm. It was near the half time, and then it was Shabab Al Athli. Again, Masharapov gets the ball, plays it to Juma. Look at this young Emirati. What a Great fantastic goal. This guy, is, he really is one Emirati to look out for the future. He was unplayable. Them two, you can see all the time. I mean, he drills it into the, the corner of the net. And again, it was from that right hand side again. So we've seen four or five. Clear cut chances on that right hand side. Coming. It could have been 5 0, it could have yeah. been 5 2. Mm. Again, let's have a look at the go. I shut up off. I mean, what's this here? You can't stick a leg out, you really can't. This player is he's on fire, he's on form, and you left that trailing leg. Yeah, I mean, he's asking for a penalty. That's it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just stupidity, isn't it? You can't do that because you're going to go down. It's there, you're going to use it, and, and make the most of it it's just poor defending and they've been to be fair Tony's been poor all night for Pajero yeah, yeah, that's a mean silly penalty yeah then the goalkeeper steps in Eduardo comes up to take the tech very rarely misses mm. I mean is that an incredible save yeah, superb save from there but this is the unlucky bit he pulls out a fantastic save um, is that it? I thought he was he scored no, not this one there there's a, there's a save again Saves yeah. a penalty. That's world class to me. Yeah, oh, not only did he save it, and then from the corner, how unlucky this is! My Sharapov comes in, yeah. who can't, who seems to score with his foot, but he can score with yeah. his head, and uh, makes it three two. I mean, they should have done better defending there. Well, this, look, look, well, look there. We've got <laughs> one, two, three, four Shabab players all going for that same ball. And Five, got, well, no, four. And yeah. you've got all the Fajera defenders, Where are defenders they? here doing absolutely nothing. They wanted it more, and that they That's they the believe they can win. This is the difference with Al Mahdi. He's coming. He's putting that belief as well. Not yeah. only ta is he a master tactician, you yeah. brought out mm. the fact they believe they could win this game. Yeah, they had no doubt. And like you said, some some poor Shabab um, Fajira. Uh, so some, some poor Shabab attacking in the first half, yeah. and some amazing cool. goalkeeping. It, it could really be at this stage five, six, seven, seven, one. If it wasn't for the goal for you, Tam Tamimi, yeah. what a fantastic uh, player. But that is a game to watch. And to me, Fajira looked like they were going to be out of the relegation mm -hmm. zone, not only out, but clear, give them some day daylight. If they'd won that game, I would have said they're not going to be relegated. But after that, I'm sorry, and I'm going for them to relegate. Asman won. And um, it looks like it to me, yeah. Asman might do it. And I, and I, th I think you're right. At 2-0, at at um, Fajira looked good, didn't they? <laughs> Um, but then, two having, chances, said, put it away. having said that, the scoreline looks flatter than usual, isn't it? Really, I mean, if you look at missed chances, <laughs> goalkeeping saves, that really should read sort of seven two. Yeah, um, sure. So, sure. but at the end of the day, it's still three points for Shabab. They're still, still in the hunt for the, sort of the top three position. Yeah. Um, They're looking very good for that top three now, yeah. Yeah, Champions League position. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, thank you. Let's move on to our next game. You're going to have what game are you going to do now? It's going to be the big game at Ashman. Yeah. So, Oof, let's have a look at that. Okay, so we're going to look at our next game, Asman versus Corfu. Can Asman in that relegation zone need a win? Mm. And this is an opportunity to win. Yeah. Corfu can with them Brazilians sometimes are unplayable. They beat Al Jazeera, they're at home. I expected a comfortable win. What so, happened? Well, here? it's a huge over both teams, isn't it? If Corfu can get three points, that pretty much seals their place in the league next year. Asman need three points to try and get out of the relegation zone. So it's, it's, a, it's a win. Especially with Fajira losing. Exactly. So it's a huge game for both teams. And, well, it didn't disappoint. You know, <laughs> I we think again. We've, we've we're back in win this week, yeah. Yeah, we've had some amazing games this season, and this week's been one, probably one of the but best. But it comes down to one, I think, one moment. 
it did, and we'll yeah, we'll look at that later moment. on. But as as we see here, we've mentioned in the last few weeks how Ashman have improved going forward. Yeah, yeah. They seem to have a game plan, probably good, um, good signings. Yeah, and they and you like belief. that car Trawali. Trawali looks a great really player, especially when he gets in that final third. Very very tricky. He's very languid. He's, he's difficult to get off the ball. You don't know quite what he's going to do, um, and a nightmare for defenders. But I like what. You know, Ashman are trying to do. They're going out there, taking the game to the opposition. Every game to cut final. You yeah. said it many Where times. Previously, a lot of the other teams done a bottom seat back and trying to catch people out of the break. Ashman have sort of gone the other way and said, "We're going to take the game to you," and basically, we'll score more goals than you. And that's what. That's what <laughs> happened. Um, but as we can see here, great on ball in, and here he is, cuts inside and just slides it back you in. The, back the way to draw good. the goalkeeper a bit under the defender. defender. <laughs> Got to do a bit better, but you know, he just dropped his shoulder. Loved it. Inside. And he's made, you know, to be fair, he's made it look easy. And it wasn't, it was a, it was a tough, tough finish, but call for Cadet. He took, took the goalkeeper and the defender out yeah. and just left himself an open goal. Done. What a it great, great start. Goal. Is this the turning point here? This is. So, as it, as it runs on, think. you know, that, that would be more home in the octagon, you know, in the UFC <laughs> or something like that. It's just unbelievable. You know, there's a, the build up before, there's a little bit of a niggle. A little bit of a kick out. Okay, okay. And that's and that's what spurred him on. But to be honest, it's pathetic. It's seven, eight rushes into the game. You can't. And he's that. just, you know, forearm smashing. Not with VAR today. No, you can't. It's ridiculous. Can. And he's there with a, you know, smile on his face. He's just, it's just pathetic. Cross his teeth. Absolutely. You know, it's nine, nine minutes into the game. You're one nil down. You, you, you are, they are still fighting for survival. You know, the chance of them going down is, is very, very minimal. Yeah. Totally this, mathematical. This game would, would solidate their position in the league if they'd have won it. And to go, te- go a man down after 10 minutes. And they expect to win. They'd expect him to win comfortably. And if it was for me, you know, you know, I wouldn't want to see him again for a long time. Because that's just, you know, he's, he's got himself team. down and his whole team. Um, right. Very, very poor. And he, you know, shaking his head. But there it is. It's, and, Yes, you may not have hit it very hard, but it doesn't make any difference. You can't afford to do that. So that give really ice man, and then your man again, Trawali. Again, one one v one, plays the ball in, and a great finish, assist and a goal. Yeah, what a lovely goal as well. But this, again, there's confusion in defence. You can't see from there, but it was a long raking ball in. Defence, it went over the Twali's defence. Twali is unfortunately struggling. Twali's got him on toast there, really, and then just just slides it in the back of the net, and great finish. But Corfa can did come back in the game. He did it. the goalkeeper has had an absolute shocker, isn't he? He's, he's well. <laughs> I don't really know what to say. He's, he, and you a former goalkeeper? Well, you know, I, don't, I don't know what to say. What's he doing? He, yeah, he's well, lent on him to. Well, the problem that long ball's come across. He's thought he could get there and couldn't. And as he's tried to collect it, he's realised he's outside the eighteen yard box, the box, so he can't can't catch it. So he's had to let it roll across his body in the hope then to to get the ball, but it's gone too far past him. And he's I, just I sort of falling on top of it. On top of the striker, so again, a, a silly mistake. Palino, great player. Yeah, and has let let Corfu can back into the game. Who, who, to be honest, don't deserve to be there. And this man doesn't miss, does he? No. He rarely misses from twenty yards. So he's not Bruno Lamas has got spot. incredible sweet left foot. And then you were thinking, back in the game. at this point, this is where Ashman struggle. You know, the heads go down. You know, we're up against it, but they didn't. Again, they've come out. They've come out and taken the attack to him. And this, I think, it's from. Leonardo is un- unbelievable. He just has a little look. There's no other options for him, so he just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. What a beautiful girl. And, you know, beautiful, but t- too easy. Too easy. No <sighs> one knows. I, di- I don't think I saw a tackle there. No yet. one's picked him up. Three players around, you've got a fourth player coming in. He's, he's picked the ball up again here, and we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. Just, just foul him. Yeah. You know, and, and then the danger's gone, you can defend the set piece, set piece, but they didn't. They let him run, they let him run. No one has wanted to make a tackle on the cross. As soon as he gets into the penalty box, they're scared to do anything. And that's just too easy, isn't it? Yeah. No one's even made an attempted tackle. 3 1. So that's. So 3 1, one 10 minutes to go, you know, the rules. Yeah. You'd hope not. But then, again, the long ball in. Again, it's it's just too easy. It's too easy, isn't it? All the time. The numbers are back. Ashman numbers are back. But. As we see from the other angle, the goalkeeper is a shocker. Huge errors. As it comes through, you think he scuffed the shot, he's got this no problem, and just squirmed underneath him. So then suddenly it's 3 2 with five, six minutes to go. Squeaky long time, yeah. And you think, you know, um, Call for Cannon here, Sentency, aren't they now? They're taking the game to Ashman. It could go either way, and you 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 would say, honestly, at this point, 
Gulf of Gang get an equaliser. But I don't understand that, man. Why would this sit back here? No. He redeemed himself there. Did, yeah, it's tough on that. It bounced in the front two and he's done well. And I think he's, he's told everyone how well he's done there. But yeah. So two big mistakes from the goalkeeper. Yeah. Big mistake from Ramon. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, I, I don't understand that. I mean, tell me, in the, the 11 men against 10, why did they sit back in the last 10 minutes and I think, like call for camp? Come on, it'll call for camp. Yeah, I think, I think it's confidence, isn't it? Yeah. You know, they haven't won many games this season. They don't know how to win. They very rarely win and positions. Relegation. And it's very difficult to replicate that in training. So it's more like... Uh, I think so. Yeah, and like I said, they, they play well when they take the game to the opposition. They do. You, you and, and it's really, really good. Um, and they got, you know, they got away with it. They scored some really good goals. So it's a suspect defending and goalkeeping, as always. <laughs> it's but it's a, gr- a huge win for Ashman. It puts so much pressure on everyone else at Fajera, um, Hatter, yeah. and, and Corfu can still, still there or thereabouts, but should be all right. Uh, anyway, give us some comments. What do you think? Do you think Ashman will be relegated? Do you think Fajera? We know Hatter will be relegated, but let us know what you think. It'd be good to, because we're getting a lot of comments. Thank you, by the way. Yeah. All right, thanks Ian. No worries. Uh, let's have a look at some of the other games. So please watch. So let's look at the first game. I was commentating Hatter versus Aldafra. Aldafra are not really in the relegation zone, but I think if they'd lost, they've lost the last four games, they've got in the new manager, the Syrian guy, Mohamed Kouidin. He hasn't really done the business, I've got to be honest. I don't like saying that because I like Aldafra. And Hatter, this is a game they had to win. They're at home, they're playing somebody who's round about there, and this win could could give them a slim chance of staying up. But disappointingly, they didn't win. It was a draw, they were 2-1 up. It took a wonder goal from Al Daffer to, to um, level. But you're going to see the highlights now. First goal, Al Daffer, you know, in the, it, was, it, it was really a game, we say it all the time, the classic cliche, a game of two halves. Al Daffer were the better team, they had the better chances. And the game, the goal came from a mistake, a mistake from John, Jonathan. So he had mm. the ball in the, the Al Dafra half. He lost the ball and it was a breakaway goal. And it was a lovely goal. The, uh, Netherlands player, uh, he took the ball, you know, on the right wing. I forget his name. I'll come back to me in a minute. And he put in a lovely cross for the, uh, new sign in his second spell, uh, Machete Diop. And it was poor defending again. And you yeah. can see it in the highlights. He, uh, he had almost a free head. It was a lovely cross and he, he just headed it. He couldn't miss. And as you hear in the highlights, that's his 100th goal actually. His second spell at Aldefra. Mm. Uh, it's his 100 goals in the Arabian Gulf Cup. So a milestone for him as well. And then, um, had to walk up. Mm. Jonatas. I have to say, I, I, I don't like the player myself. He's been brought in to score goals. You think, what are you on about? He scored two goals, but, he had three or four chances as his first touch here. It doesn't, for me, it doesn't look like a natural footballer. It's, everything seems hard work. <laughs> um, when you look at Fabio Lima, where he, he missed but his yeah. touch and the way skill. He got that is like, or Coronado and things like that. Or even Tawali, the way they sort of glide, and it just looks so easy on the eye. For him, everything he does looks hard work. Like, I'm worn out watching it. It's just like, <laughs> goodness me. Yeah. Is this guy, and he had three or three chances, I think it was, where the ball was played, he was in space, it was a goal scoring opportunity, and his first touch go to the goalkeeper, his first touch went to another player. Mm. And then the goal, if you look at the goal, you can see it now, he's, he gets the ball, he loses it, it comes back to him, he shoots, it was a tame shot, it comes back to him, second bite to the cherry, put the goal away, and the goalkeeper should have done better. Hatter, it's 1 1. And then penalty. Mm. I suppose he's probably got two good attributes. He's, he's lucky and he doesn't give up. Yeah. So he keeps going and he gets the goals, but he, he doesn't get enough for me. He's been brought in to get the goals for Hatter. The next one was a penalty, and I've got to say it was a well taken penalty from Jonathan. And he's got two goals. He should have got five. Yeah. And I see that every time I watch Hatter, he has an opportunity. And I'm thinking, this is it. Hatter doing it. For Jira, 2 0 up. Thinking this is their opportunity, and lo and behold, it was a goal from nothing. It was a crossfield ball played out on the left wing. You can see it. It was a long ball played over the top. And the substitute came in, Mohammed Ismail, the United Arty, and he took it well. Yeah. Mm. Ferocious shot. The goalkeeper got a hand, but he couldn't do it, and it was two-two. Yeah, nothing much to write home after that. And to me, had to game over. Alas, mathematically it's still there, but we're talking. They've got to win every single game. They've only won two games all season. 
They've got to win the next three games to have a slim chance. Ian, not going to happen. This was the game, wasn't it? They had, they had to win this game. And like I said, if, if they had a slightly more, what's the word, more clinical striker. Because defensively, they're, they're, they're quite good. They've, and they've, they've created the chances. You know, they've created the chances for him. And he's, yes, he scored two goals, but like I said, he should have had three or four. And that's every game I've yeah. watched him. And, and the thing is, Ian, when I did a team compare with these two teams, Al Daffra had a worse, uh, you, you would think they were in the bottom of the table yeah. compared to, um, Hatta who have a better defence, that more clean sheets, more shots, more possession. Mm. I'm looking, is this, am I going wrong here? So Al Daffra, they need to sort it out for next season because they were a team that were always up there. They're full of international players. I think that's what saved them. Mm. They do have some good players. I think right now that's the last five games they've lost. Lost four, drawn one. Yeah. That's, that's boring for me. It really is. But I think that draw will keep them up. Mm. Um, I'm very, very confident. Anyway, yeah. enough talking from me. Let's have a look through the next game. Well, Sharjah Banyas, you know, big, big game. probably the biggest game of the, of the round. To build the huge game, huge game for both teams. Both teams have got to win. If both teams are wanting to you know, challenge for that league title, yeah. um, they've got to. Shire should probably, the league title's all but gone for them now. Champions League. Um, so, but, you know, they're looking for that third, third place, but with Al Nasser close on the, on the heels, but by Ness needing to win to put the pressure back on Al Jazeera. Yeah. And, I've got a, yeah. it was quite a, um, odd game. It was really, really open. Both teams were prepared to attack, but which meant that both teams, um, allow spaces at the back for each other to, to go into. I, I was expecting quite a sort of tight, cagey game, both being very But compact. it was very open. It was yeah. very, very open. And there were, you know, there's, there's a number of chances. And Banyas started off the game a lot stronger. It was real fluent passing, they were good going forward. They prepared well. They looked like they yeah. prepared well. Because the game before against Hatter was, was rubbish. Yeah. And that actually managed to dictate the, the tempo of the game as well. So throughout the periods of the first half, they slowed it right down move the ball well across and then when they wanted to attack they bang they went to pace and that's good against Charger and top team yeah, yeah Charger yeah, on the hop really um, but looking at the game I thought Charger were the, the better team second, the second half especially um, going back to the first half very quickly João Pedro superb run from sort of um, 30 yards out into the box was brought down and obviously converted penalty to make it make it 1-0 and that and going into half time that was pretty much how it, how it stood and it was, it was a fair result, but second half, Sharjah really took the game to Bangnets and, and, and played some really, really good football. It did and looked like the Sharjah of old, that Sharjah from two months ago who were walking away with the league. Um, and it, it was good to see because we have been quite critical of them recently, well, and quite, and quite rightly, but it was good to see them in the second half and um, it was it was a good, a good goal, but a good equaliser really. Kayo scored the goal. Again, for me, disappointing by Nass' defence. He sort of, he had the ball in the edge of the 18 yard box. He faked to shoot a couple of times, drew the, drew the, the tackle in on the block, and then, um, yeah, the Abanyas, um, players sort of We featured him back over the week, one week. Um, and he just slotted it from sort of 18 yards. And it was, and it was a good finish. I think, you know, manager would be disappointed with defending for it, but, you know, at the end of the day, he's done work with it in the bottom corner. And then probably the last sort of 10, 15 minutes, it was all shot. Exactly. Bangas were backs against the wall. They were looking to go there with the 11 men behind the ball. Yeah. And they, you know. I shot had the ball in the net, didn't they? Yeah, they did, yeah. But that was, um, it was offside, yeah. So uh, at the end, after that final 10 minutes, I think Charger would be, uh, sorry, Bangas was very happy with the ball. Oh, because, because uh, you know, it could have quite easily gone the other way. But Ian, I was talking to a, a, a coach who was, who was at Charger. What happened this season? I mean, the champions, the starter, well, he puts it down to Ryan Mendes being sold. Mm. I'm going to put you on the spot. What is he in for you? Was it that selling Ryan Mendes? They didn't replace him. Is it players a little bit complacent? We won the league. We're going to win it again. I think was it the change of tactics? I think, I think that change of tactics, I think it stemmed from that, that cup final they lost. You know, when it's that cup final, playing a very, very defensive style of football, very sort of Try to soak up the pressure and plan a counter attack, mm-hmm. and that they hadn't been doing that previously. You know, they were going out, taking get, taking the game to the teams. They were dictating the play. They were dictating the pace. They've got some going forward. They've got some of the best, well, have best players in the league. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. some reason, they've gone into this cup final and played this more counter attack defensive style, and it just didn't work. And that, that was a huge loss for them in the cup final. You know, it was a lot. What was the injury time they lost? Yeah. Um, and I think that's. 
that's a bit of a knock-on effect from there and they haven't quite got back to their old winning ways and gradually, like I said, the second half was the charge of old. Taking the yeah, game. It takes a goal though, they have to go behind. Yeah, not like the charge of old. No, if they would immediately, I find that they go behind, then they kind of play better. Yeah, I, you know, I would hope it would be complacency because you know, that's poor professionalism if it was. I think it's a combination of tact- the tactics. Not sure why they sold members, to be honest. I think that's, that's a poor move. Yeah. Um, Any Sharjah fans out there, tell us what you think. It'd be good to hear. Mm-hmm. We'll hear from you about the Lasley fans and some other Sharjah fans. Tell us what you think. Yeah, good to hear. We are getting good comments. Mm-hmm. Okay? Thanks for that, Ian, and thanks thank for your honest uh, analysis and what you think. Now we're going to look at uh, Al Nasser versus, well, Al Ain versus Al Nasser. Al Nasser, um, you know, they're battling for that third place. They want to be in the top three because mm-hmm. Ban Yassin. Obviously, Al Jazeera the top two in that yeah. third place is vital for the Champions League. And uh, Al Nasser came off with, a, with an incredible win, but it, a lot of it comes down to one Kojo Lava. He missed an open goal. You're going to see the highlights. He missed an open goal. And um, and he hit the crossbar. He just hasn't got his scoring boots on like he did last season. He, mm. It was goal again. And then it comes down to three big errors from the defence. We've been pointing out. I don't like doing it, I know Ian, but we don't like to point out that it's errors. We prefer wonderful goals and yeah. like the, the uh, Ajman goal where he went through mm. the defence and tackling. It's just big errors and Alain's the lost 3-1 and it was down to huge errors. We know that pretty much every team in the league is, is good going forward. You know, there's a real... We've got some lovely flair and tackling. Yeah, there's a lot of emphasis placed on mid, good, strong midfielders, good, good forwards. And the attacks for me at the moment this season seems to be sort of almost point. forgotten. And it's kind of well, we'll stick any sort of back four in. And like I said, you know, previously, whatever they'll score, we'll just score one more. <laughs> and that kind of seems it's how it is it's apart in. from your yeah, Almassa, um, the, the better team seems to be strong in defence. Yeah, I'll just see it, Al Massa. And yeah, interesting, interesting. Mm-hmm. But it all started off really early. Al Nasser, um, I think he's been a, a revelation. The uh, Sabbath was well, not a revelation, a great sign from mm-hmm. NASA. He's just uh, he's, he's, he's a wonderful player, and he, he won a penalty. But the the penalty, as you can see, was saved by the goalkeeper. He redeemed himself. The goalkeeper made a, a silly yeah. error, and then Sabbath came in again. It was it was like a shot come cross, maybe a little bit sneaky. Maybe he played it, and the goalkeeper didn't read it. Tried to save it, but it gone over the line, and the linesman gave the goal. Uh, and so, and then the goal by Alain was a, uh, I mean, Kojo Lab, an open goal couldn't score, hits a crossbar, then I forget his name, Bandar, that's it, he gets the ball on the right wing. And to score, you can see in the high, mm. it was a little gap, I mean, it had to be absolutely 100% perfect, but what a wonderful yeah, goal it was. Squeezed it between the goalkeeper and the uh, post and, and got a goal, so it's 1 1. And then, then it was a, a comedy errors. Uh, Shiatani, mm. yeah, the Japanese player, he gets the ball in defence and it's again that first touch, let it go, fell to uh, Gabriel Silva, Silva yeah. and, and puts it in the back of him, makes it 2-1. And then again from nothing, you can see it in the highlights, the ball played to the defenders, first touch let him down, the, uh, what's his name, they call him Toza, picks the ball up, the Portuguese player, goes round the defender who made the error, Crosses it in Tiger Bull, you, you pointed out what a fantastic yeah. header. He knew where he wanted the ball, he ran into the space, and he just, uh, sheer time again, just couldn't keep up with him, and he just right. used the power and the idea of yeah, him just, to make it 3 1. The movement, the movement to be honest, that was exceptional, wasn't it? And there's no one's getting near it, and then to head it down low and hard, giving the goalkeeper no chance. Beautiful goal from Tiger Bull, one of fantastic. But again, it's come from, like I said before, two moments of, not madness, but two moments when defenders have just switched off. A simple ball, both times it should have been controlled and then played up the field, yeah. just weren't. And they were almost as if they were looking, especially the, the last goal, he was looking what he was going to do next instead of concentrating what he was going to do now. Good point. That was a problem. Yeah. Um, and it's a great finish. Yeah, it was. And um, a good win by, by Al Nasser. Mm. And uh, looking good for. We could find both Al Nasser and yeah. Shabab al so It's going to be a fantastic game. Hopefully, yes. It lives up to the, the billing. Uh, it should be a good game. But Al Nasser, that gives them a, a better chance of getting that top three position. It was a big win. They needed it. 
and uh, they did the business. Yeah, it's going to be his next. Al Jazeera or, or Banyas for the one two, yeah. and then it's going to be Al Nasser for Sharjah for three four. Okay, thanks Ian. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. We're going to look at the. No, I've got one left. I've got Al Wadda versus oh, Calva. Calva, yeah, our team. I'm Calva. We nearly forgot Calva. Sorry, Calva. <laughs> Again, revelation this season. Yeah, the, uh, they're always a joy to watch, aren't they? They play really good football. They've got some really talented players, a real variety of players as well. What I like about them is they play to the strengths. Yes. You're not trying to play like a, a Barcelona no. um, and things like that. And to be honest, their goal was, was exactly that. That ball got played into Malapa. He's, you know, he is a huge unit. He's so strong. Physically, two of the Alwada players just could not get get hold of him, they couldn't get hold of him, they couldn't get them in the ball, and he just held them off, held them off, and then just laid the ball across with an easy finish. And it was just, it was brilliant, it was superb forward play to watch. Him and, him and David Maya, the yeah. players in the season. They just link up brilliantly. This was um, Hank Tenkart's first game back for Alwada, the manager, after returning. Yeah, exactly. And he's had, what, two, two and a half, three weeks to work with him, and You'll be disappointed. First half they were poor, and I think he would admit that they were very, very poor. Defensively they were poorly set up, there was no compactness, no one really seemed to know their role. Second half, they were a lot better. Uh, I think, you know, he's had, had a word with them in the, in the change rooms, detailed what needs to change, and they were a lot, lot better. And to be honest, the last sort of 15 minutes or so, Calvary were hanging on. Yeah. Um, so overall, I think Calvin would be very, well, would be very, very pleased with it. And, and oh, I don't, you know, be disappointed not to pick up a point at least. Yeah, they should have played it. They had many chances, didn't they, in that yeah. game? He just couldn't put it in the net. Yeah, they were much, like I said, they were much better. There was a lot more purpose, they attacked better. Yeah. They were just, they were unlucky in the second half, but the first half they were poor. Yeah. And he's got time to prepare for it. Maybe he's bought in for the new season. Yeah. Not really, they're safe. They're up there. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for that, Ian. Mm-hmm. All right, let's move on to the, uh, the standings quickly. Ian. I'm just going to get the standings up on my phone. Um, well, we know, aren't we, that Al Jazeera at the top. Al Jazeera top, Banyas, Sharjah. Of course, it's Sharjah Al Nasser. Let's have a look at it here. It's giving me the Arabian Gulf Cup. I'm not going to look at the league. Here we go. Yes, you're right. Al Jazeera on um, play 23, 115. Let me turn it this way, then I'll get more of it. So, Al Jazeera on. Uh, Goals against, goal for, goal difference, here we have the points. 50 points, Banyas, 49 mm. points. I mean, you don't get it. Shibaba Latley in third place. Yeah. On 43, Sharjah on 42. It's all up here, you can see it. Al Nasser, I mean, it's so tight. Below them two teams, you can't read it. No, it's, and it's going to be an interesting finish. We looked at, in terms of the running, who's got the harder and who's got the easiest. It's difficult to say really because. I did have one. It is, yeah, it's funny to know about. Banyas are playing. Shabbat next week, which will be a tough game. Having said that, Shabbat are playing for that sort of potentially that fourth place, third, um, uh, third place, sorry. Sharjah are playing Hatta. So, you know, Hatta mathematically is still alive, yeah. so there's still a lot for them to play for. And Al Jazeera are playing Ashman. Right, and Ashman need the points, so they both need the points. So it's interesting, you know, yeah, every yeah. game is, is a big game for all the teams. I don't think there's Ashman a home and the team. Yeah, the team are home. You know, it's, it's not a case now where I'm playing bottom of the table, so that's an easy win. It, it's not, you know, it, these are huge games. Yeah, they can be come close. So they can um, come place. Yeah, that's, that's a brilliant game. round. And I think actually, probably, this round of games will determine what happens, <laughs> what, who will stay up, who will go down, and then we'll go third place. Tell me who you think is going to be third place. I'm going to go for, for Shabbat Allah, the way they're playing at the moment. Unbeaten, playing yeah. incredible football. I think. Actually, I think probably Friday will, will be a big indicator on that because Al Nasser and Shabbat both playing it. Whoever wins that yeah. Yeah, will go into the, the next round of games on a high. They're both, all three of them, Shabbat, well, Shabbat um, Sharjah, and Al Nasser are playing for that third. Yeah. I mean, the league has been fantastic. I, yeah, I, I just don't, I don't think you can say. You can't say. You can't you know, Sharjah, on the day of Sharjah on the form, they can beat anybody. Um, Takabu up front, it's just unbelievable in the box, you're giving half the chance to score goals. Um, and then you've got Shabab who, who, who are a great all-round team, well organised, well disciplined and tactically yeah, very astute. So that third place is going to be tough, tough to decide. Okay Ian, it is, but I'm going to go for Shabab I'll athlete. Right, bottom of the table, had to, to me they've gone the five points adrift, they've got to win three games. Fajira going to lose all the games. Aishman and Fajira on 14 points. Mm. I'm good for Aishman. The way they're playing Fajira, 
they're playing better football. They just fall apart on that sometimes. Yeah. But I'd like I'd like what I'm seeing from from Ashford. You know, they're, they're good. They are good going forward. They're good, really good goal scorers. We know how weak they are def- defensively. I think Fujera as a team unit are probably better. Yeah, but haven't got that bit of spark that Ashman have have got up front. So I think Ashman will probably get out of it. Yeah, I'm going for Ashman. Fujera, we still I still don't understand why they, they got rid of the manager. Yeah, that's stupid. That's going to cost to me. That that was uh, going to cost him. All right, and. Um, Predictions here, you've got them in front of you. Mm. It's a tough round, isn't it? You know, that. we'll make it quick fire, guys. For, for a neutral first game, we've got Ashman versus Al Jazeera. It'd be great if um, Ashman won that. Yeah. Um, but I can't. I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Again, I think it'd be high scoring. Um, I think it could be a, a 3 2, 3 2 Al Jazeera. Yeah. I, I, I'm picking a, a 3 0 Al Jazeera 3 1. Mm. Then Charger Hatta. Again, I think it could go either way. Hatta desperate, well, both teams are desperate for the points. Hatta seems to be pretty weak in, week out. But it's those inconsistencies, isn't it? It's those. Mm. The cat's it's gone. Yeah. It'd be silly, yeah, it'd be silly to go against Charger. Yeah, it would. Mm. I'm going for a Charger. Yes, yeah. a 2 0. Yeah. A double 2 0. And then Banyas Shabbat. Good game. Uh, that's a game of the week. It's got to be with yeah. 24. I think. Gosh. <sighs> well, I don't know. I think. I'll, I'll, for me personally, I'm like, I would like. I've enjoyed the way back into been playing football. I'd like them potentially to go into go into that last game, um, having to win or you know to play against shit. Um, I'm just here, so I'd, I'd like playing to win. But I think they haven't been playing particularly well the last couple of weeks. You yeah. know, I'm saying they've been grinding out points. I haven't been playing to pure. And so yeah, it depends. Time. Depends what happens in the cup final. But having said that, there's a big break, isn't there, between so players get a rest. I think yeah, it could be a draw. Yeah, I'm with definitely. Oh, yeah. For Jera Al Wada, this well, is because they've got a new manager. They're still adapting, but again, we saw them in ah, again a tough one to call. For Jera, they do it. This is their opportunity. Yeah, it is because Al Wada are not going down. They're not playing for anything. They just play for the new manager and players. Yeah. So again, he might be looking at looking at different players, might look at slightly different formations. So this is a great opportunity for us. So if, if, if they're going to get a, get three points, this is what you know, potentially they could get them. Yeah, and it could keep them up. Yeah, if they win, there's a very good chance they'll stay up. Yeah. Uh, Al Wassel call for Cam. I think Al Wassel leaves on fire, isn't he? Yeah. Raman suspended. Yeah, um, and he you know maybe the man is a easy key player for them as well. Yeah. So I think that's the Al Wassel. And then finally, Calva versus LA. So I think we're, we're LA sitting fifth, sixth, Calva seventh. Yes, yes. So, you know, it'd be good, it'd be, it should be a good game. It depends if, you know. Lab what I like good. about Calva, it doesn't matter where they're, they'll go to win every game yeah. and they give everything. Yeah. LA, and it depends on the cause of the but if you can get his yeah. shooting boots on. You know what you're going to get from Calva, don't you? They're, Either they're 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 they draw or work extremely hard. They, they play for each other. Um, and maybe because they enjoy themselves and, you know, they like them, don't they? They enjoy it. Like you said, it's not, oh, it's just end of the season. I, I'm going for a cover win. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'll go with you. Yeah. That's it. Okay. All right, thanks for listening, everybody. And thanks, really, we're getting lots of subscribers, comments. We really appreciate it. Keep them coming, but tell us your predictions, what you're thinking, and we'd like to hear more like that now. Um, it's really good. I'd like to say thanks to to Ian, myself, just, uh, and Robert, who did the introduction with uh, mm. For us. And we got the goal of the week. I'm going for the Iceman guy, number 11. What's his name? Oh, uh, Leonardo. Leonardo, what a lovely goal. Yeah. Leonardo, enjoy. Yeah, so long. Masalara. It's Mandacchio. Bit of space for him to run into. He's done well here. What a run this. Left footed finish. What a goal. Leandro Spandacchio. It was an absolutely delightful goal from the Brazilian.